Hello there. As you may know, we have an eclipse coming to New England on April 8th, and I just wanted to address a few misconceptions and pass along a few tips for safe viewing so that you can enjoy the experience. Huh? You may have heard that the rays from an eclipse are mysteriously deadly. Looking at an eclipse is especially dangerous. That its rays will cause your eyeballs to melt or other gross things if your gaze is not averted. But the fact is that sunlight during an eclipse is no more dangerous or less than on any other day. The same rules for looking at the sun don't do it. Apply during an eclipse. Sunlight will hurt your eyes. Period. Sunlight can give you sunburn, even in the shade or on a cloudy day. Sunlight during an eclipse is just as bad as any other day. The only exception is during totality, where only the corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun, is visible, and it's as bright as a full moon. The danger involves is if even a small amount of sunlight is showing, like just before totality or just after totality, in which case you need to treat it as if you were staring at a fully illuminated sun. So I have a couple of items to show you so that you can be safely enjoying the eclipse. In southern New England, there will be about 90% coverage of the sun, so you can still weather permitting, of course, get a very good view. Here's one method you can use for observing the eclipse. You can have any cardstock or piece of paper with a hole punched in it and a background piece of white paper. Notice how the different holes look up close and as I draw away, they all become circular. Another fun variation that you can use is any kind of colander. Each one of these holes during the eclipse would be producing their own image. Now. Here's a really interesting optical effect. What was bright becomes dark. What was dark becomes bright. If you want a clearer image of the sun, then you'll have to make a tiny hole in your cardstock, and then you'll get a very nicely focused image of the sun. It will also be minuscule, so you would have to get really up close to look at it. If you use a bigger hole, the image will be brighter, but then it becomes a real problem. The image you're going to get will only really be nice looking, at a distance. So the solution is to use a flat mirror. If you're using a makeup mirror, make sure that you're not using the curved side because it's just going to ruin the image. Make sure you're having your holes set against the flat side. And of course, be careful aiming mirrors. You are reflecting sunlight in a mirror and might take somebody else by surprise. So the rules about if you look at the sun, don't do it, still apply. Here is my mirror with a holy piece of paper taped over it. I put a nice big piece of tape across the funhouse mirror side so I don't use it. It also makes it harder for me to blast myself accidentally. All right, now I'm going to aim this mirror at the whiteboard over there. And there's the sun. If I pull back, I can get a noticeably improved image, but it's still not so great because this is a really big hole. But check this out. If I aim the reflection very carefully, I can actually get the reflection on a far white surface in the shade. Of course, be careful if you're doing this. You don't want to be aiming an eclipse into somebody else's window. Alternatively, if you have binoculars or a telescope, you can project a bright, sharply focused image of the sun on a white background. As you can see, though, it's tricky to aim just holding it in your hands. If you have one, use a tripod. So, for actually looking at the sun, you want to have the real deal. Things that you do not want to be using. Sunglasses. Look, you can see clearly through the lens. So imagine what that's going to be doing to your eyes if you're staring at the sun through those things. Exposed film or other thin dark plastic. Again, you can actually see through it, and if you can see through it, game over. This is what works. If you can't see through these lenses, that's good, because you're not supposed to be able to see through them. It has to be able to take really bright sunlight. These are the same thing, but in a cardboard insert. Note, it says very clearly that it is safe for direct solar viewing. If you have children or anyone who might have difficulties holding them over their eyes properly, you can try these fun picnic plate filter holders. 
So I'm now going to demonstrate with my camera what happens when you use each of these. These are the sunglasses. Not much difference really. If I try looking at the sun with them, definitely that's a no-go. Next up, the exposed film strip. See, you can see through it. Not good. I can still see the sun quite brightly. A note, never use binoculars or telescopes to look directly at the sun. Even with sunglasses or dark film, this actually can melt your eyeballs. Binoculars and telescopes work by concentrating light. So imagine what would happen if you're looking at the sun with one. Well, let's not imagine it. Let's actually do it. Here's my exposed film afterwards. See the dimples? Do you really want to put your eyeballs to that kind of risk? And finally, the genuine solar eclipse stuff. By the way, make sure when you're using this that you have the reflective side facing out. It works better that way. Hopefully you can't see a darn thing, which is good. And now you can see a small sun in comfort. Oh, and one more fun thing to do. Bring a thermometer with you. You can actually be a citizen scientist you can track the temperature of the air around you from beginning to end of the eclipse. And you can even send your data in. I'll post a link down below. Even if it's clouded over, prepare to be amazed. So be safe, have fun, and remember to slather on that SPF 50 sunblock. If you have any questions about watching the eclipse, please put them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more updates.